Uh oh. <laughs> that didn't look great. How's that for some clickbait to start us off? But uh, yeah, thanks for clicking on the video, guys. Welcome to the kickoff of the NorCal season. It's the Cal Aggie Criterium. There's our jerseys. We're Team Teru and Elite. And yeah, this obviously was uh, an interesting one. This was last time we raced on this course. And as you can see, I have a little chip on my shoulder because yeah, I got second um, to Nick from Team Red Bikes Bro. So yeah, definitely was looking out for him and was definitely looking out for this guy right in front of me, which is Jeff from NorCal Cycling Videos. I'm sure a lot of your guys' favorite uh, cycling YouTube channel. It's, it's definitely one of mine. So yeah, the, the plan was for me to go for the sprint. I've been working on my sprint all off season and um, yeah, I, I really wanted a, a good result and it usually comes down to a field sprint for this race um, for a whole bunch of reasons that maybe we'll get into. But yeah, I was gonna try to sit back, be lazy and um, go for that bunch kick at the end. So we had a solid squad. We had seven guys, including myself. So we had Christopher, Jacob, Zach, Bobby, Yuri, and Matt. And the idea was that um, everybody but me and Matt was going to go for breaks, covering things and attacking and just being active. And then Matt was either going to try to lead me out or go for a late race attack that he usually likes to do. So a little background on myself, if you guys don't know me, I'm definitely more of an all-rounder who can sprint rather than a, a pure sprinter like some of these guys. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely prefer a reduced bunch sprint rather than a, a big bunch gallop. But uh, yeah, so I was going to try to conserve energy nonetheless and not um, resort to my attacking ways. So. I wanted to talk kind of how you do that because a lot of people will sit in the field the entire time, but they will burn themselves out. So I have some clips of that hairpin. It's probably the, the most interesting feature on this course. And it's a big part of how to conserve energy is take really efficient lines. And a lot of people have trouble with this corner. It's, it's definitely tricky. Um, but it has cambered roads, so you can really actually kind of rip it so, so long as you don't get on the wrong side of that camber. Um, so yeah, I, I felt like I did a pretty good job. I have some clips here where I would kind of take more of an inside line, and you pass guys on the entrance when, that, when you do that, but you pay for it on the exit because you're probably having to hit your brakes and give up some of your momentum and spike up. But that being said, I did do a pretty good job conserving energy. I, I normally average or my normalized for a crit like this is usually around 300 watts. And this day it was down around 250. And I, there are crits where my heart rate will average like 175 plus, even 180. And this day it was, it was, I think it was an average of like 158 or something. So that's pretty, pretty chill for me. Um, and yeah, I think a lot of that comes down to cornering, but also more cerebral there i think it takes a, a zen mindset to be kind of a, a lazy sprinter when i was first starting out in the the p12 field i think i was kind of like white knuckling everything and that really does cost you energy i think you just kind of have to follow moves when they're they're going up and then let yourself kind of float back and and wait for those times to move up and, and yeah, it just, it really takes kind of a, a Zen mindset to do that. And, it, and it's, it's sort of difficult for me and maybe it's something I can work on, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better at it. So just an example of 
you don't sitting back and being the lazy sprinter doesn't mean you you don't do anything because it's actually probably more efficient to be off the front in some of these races um so here i am i just am am getting what i like to call like a free ride my my teammate is attacking and i saw this guy was kind of itching you you can always sort of tell when someone's about to to go and this guy with the the fenders which is super badass by the way um had been attacking quite a bit so i found myself on his wheel and i thought what the heck like let's do it um because back in the field they're probably taking that hairpin much slower and you're gonna have to spike watts to to get out of it so this it does take a little energy to to latch on here but i think in the end you probably end up saving more so yeah i got this this free ride and i think normally i would totally counter attack this like my teammates on the front um i don't think we've been caught yet and it's just a it's a great time to counter attack and there it goes on the right and but today i was i was really trying to to keep everything in check and just conserve energy. Um, so yeah, I, I didn't do that. And my, my heart rate's back down to, you know, 165, which is, it's pretty low for me. So it's tough to do, but yeah, I, 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 I was, I was really trying to, to conserve energy here. And this is something it's a uh, it's definitely a lot easier to do with a a squad of you know great teammates. My my teammate Bobby just went and kept covered that move, and and now you have a couple guys going across, and and I'm kind of yeah just looking for another opportunity to get a, a free ride and and not uh, spike up watts too much because I think the the most detrimental thing to your your end sprint is going to be how many times you spike up. And I looked at my power data and I actually didn't break a thousand Watts till that last lap. So that's really good. And, and sure you see my, my power jumping up to the five hundreds and those are, they're not easy efforts by any means, but I can do probably, you know, 50 of those efforts. Whereas I only have maybe like, five in a race of spiking up to a, a thousand plus watts and and each one of those is gonna take more away from your sprint than these little little quote unquote 500 watt surges but yeah the we're coming into this hairpin again and i think a lot of people when they're at the front they it's kind of tricky to judge how fast you can come into this hairpin that guy at the front, I know he's a pretty good uh, cycle cross racer. He uh, he beat me <laughs> a bunch this winter, so he takes it pretty well. And and look at this gap that opens up that I have to to close. So yeah, these efficient lines through that that hairpin are gonna pay dividends at the end of the race. And there goes the a little bit of a counter attack, and everybody's on it though. So more saving energy tips. I think it's uh, everyone knows that a bigger rider is going to give you a better draft, and there I have no qualms about finding bigger riders to to hide behind, and also getting arrow is is really important. You know, if you're finding yourself in the wind, you know, try to get low and narrow and just not spend as much energy in putting powers and power into the pedals so i i really like this this rider in front of me i think this is michael claudio he's a he's a beast and uh yeah he has a really good draft and he is a, a definitely a solid wheel to to be behind if you're trying not to um use your power So yeah, I'm just getting a free ride here. It's great. We're off the front. Um, I'm not really having to put in too much effort. And yeah, we get the, to pick our lines through all these corners and, and that's, again, saving energy. 
and here it is. This is the one time, literally the one time in this race that I was at the front. And yeah, it's only for a couple seconds. So in all its glory, I don't even put any power down because I, yeah, I'm super committed to that saving energy. And yeah, we slow right down and there goes my teammate, bam, perfect. So here's another one of those opportunities to just catch a free ride off the front. So I, of course, take it. And it's that Fender kid that is attacking again. And yeah, this guy's taking a hard pull to, to get on his wheel. And I'm kind of sitting back, you know. It's He's doing a lot more watts than me. And everyone back in the field is is probably having to surge as well. So yeah, just try to look out for these opportunities to get free rides. It's it's super important. Like you don't have to be the one snapping to a thousand watts to get off the front every time. I kind of take this wicked line to try to conserve a little energy <laughs> after he pulls me up there. So check this out, that rider that just moved on up on the left there, that's Dave Kasel. So he's a, a former national champion. And I'm going through this footage, I saw him do that almost every lap. He would move up right before this hairpin and watch this. He gets to take a nice smooth line and look at this gap that's forming that he doesn't have to deal with. So it just goes to show with some experience, you, you find the places to move up and you're gonna save energy. All right, I think I've put you guys through enough of me rambling. Let's get into why I'm sure you're all here, which is that last lap. So my teammate Matt, uh, AKA Matthew, just passed and he said, sit on that wheel. Um, because he saw that I was on Jeff's wheel, which he knows is, is probably the best wheel in the field. He, uh, Jeff is a master at putting himself in a position to win these races. And I think we all know he, uh, he does a lot of the time. So I'm here and I'm going to do my best to defend my position. And, and let me tell you, this is it's hard it it takes a lot of energy a lot of um confidence you know some people would call it being a dick um and yeah that that zen mindset that i was talking to you guys about earlier is all gone so i think we're we're actually on the last lap here and we we pass a lap right at, right there a little scary and Having to ride in the gutter. Don't show my mom this footage. She would, she would freak out. And I'm liking my position. I'm, I'm. This is, this is looking good. I'm kind of measuring how many riders are in front of us, and so I'm on Jeff's wheel. I guess he has a teammate right now, but uh, Nick is just in front of him. The guy who beat me in that uh, the last time we raced here. I think I say something to my teammate Yuri there and just say, let me have this wheel. Um, just because I'm trying to, to limit any opportunity that Jeff uh, squiggles away. So we're coming in and take this wide line through the hairpin, which is not optimal, um, but I do conserve a good amount of momentum and you get the inside right here. And then I think this is where I personally maybe start making mistakes. So I probably should have squished over to the left because as you can see, one, two riders hit that apex and they get, a, get to move up on me. So now I have this pressure from this rider on my left and look at that, a, a rider on my right and I get shuffled back. And now here we go. I'll, I'll probably just let it play for this first one. Yeah. I'll do it once in slow motion. Let's 
So yeah, not a not a super nice video, but let's let's break this down. Let's try to learn from it. So I think this is a point that definitely caused me to crash. So as you can see, that writer on the right is taking the optimal line, the the orange S works, and so I'm getting forced to the outside and. I remember thinking that, okay, I'm going to have to ride in the gutter here. I'm going to have to use that that little berm that the gutter is just because we're going so fast and I'm getting squeezed to the outside. And as you guys saw, unfortunately, that's where Jeff, his crash took him because we were going around a right-hand bend. His momentum carried him across the road, which was right where I was aiming. So now let's talk about Jeff. So I grabbed this frame where it's hard to tell because there's a bunch of traffic, but he basically overlapped his wheel with Nick, the Red Bikes Bro rider. And you can see that he knew he had made a mistake because if you really look closely at this photo, you can see that his rear wheel is skidding. So he grabbed his rear brake to, to try to un-overlap his wheel, but as you guys saw, it was, it was a little too late. And I think, you know, a lot of people would be like, oh my God, like, don't overlap wheels. Like, everyone says that, but why is that so important? Um, it really is demonstrated great in this crash. And basically, when you overlap wheels, you take away your ability to counter steer. So without giving you guys a physics lesson, to actually turn a bike or a motorcycle, if you want to go to the right, you need to turn to the left for a millisecond, and then you can turn to the right. Um, you can try this next time you're like riding in a bike lane, and you can just try to ride on the white line and be like, okay, I'm going to turn to the right. And you see that you, you steer off the line to the left. So when you overlap wheels, his momentum, he wanted to, to catch himself. So he was off balance and he wanted to steer to the left so he could actually take a tighter line to the right because Nick, the writer in front of him, was taking a, a tighter line. But the problem was Nick's wheel is right there. So it's really, really difficult to save these situations. And that's why like every, you know, old guy that's teaching you how to bike, so don't overlap wheels. It, it is, it's, it's just because it puts you in a situation that's impossible to get out of. So yeah, that, that's Zach's um, talk about overlapping wheels. I think it's really important to actually reiterate this, whether you're a, a cat five or a cat one, it, it, just because it is obviously so detrimental. And I'm sure, uh, like, I would love to hear everyone's input on whether or not they think I could have avoided this crash. I, I personally think I could have. I think it would have been difficult, but I think I had the traction to turn to the right. The camber of the road does, it's going against you on that corner. It's a slightly off camber turn. Um, so I really was worried that I was going to wash out if I tried to steer to the right. The other thing that kind of caught me off guard was how far Jeff kind of careened to the the side of the road. He, uh, I guess we were in the, a right-hand turn, so of course his momentum is going to carry him towards the, the left. But I was thinking that he was going to maybe fall and go forward, and it's it's really amazing how fast he, he careened to the, the left-hand side. And yeah, it, it really... Honestly, it just kind of shows that this type of thing can happen to anyone, and I don't hold it against Jeff. I, I think it was a mistake, of course, but even the best in the world will, will make this mistake, especially in the last corner of a, a crit or a road race, because you're hypoxic, you really want to win, and touching your brakes is, is the quickest way to, to not win one of these bunch sprints, so you... You do have to have some some screws loose, but yeah, that um, I'd love to to hear your guys' thoughts on this. It's uh, it's kind of a, a weird 
shitty thing because Jeff is banged up pretty bad. I'm super lucky. I actually, I, I don't really have any serious injuries. I did smack my arm on that pole, which honestly would have been really, really bad um, had I hit it. And actually a Swift kid nearly hit it as well. You, you probably can go back and freeze frame, but I've watched this crash enough. It's a, it's, it's a nasty one. And yeah, I hope Jeff heals up well. Um, yeah, my bike is okay. I'm okay. I, I trained, you know, I took a day off and I, I took a, tr um, I went for a run and then, yeah, I was back on the bike, but I wanted to, to make a quick note about concussions too, because I think I had a minor concussion as well. So if you do have a crash like this, so you know, where you're going 30 miles an hour, you know, just take it easy. There's, there's no reason to rush it. I, uh, I'm definitely the type of person that feels like I have to ride every day. And I just took a moment. And I was like, dude, it's, it's January. It's okay. You can like take a day off. You just, you know, did the equivalent of jumping out of a car at 30 miles an hour wearing a, a skin suit. So yeah, that's my, uh, my thoughts. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you maybe learned something about it. Um, like comment, subscribe, blah, 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 fart noise. Um, yeah. See you in the next one.